Alright, so now I've got it hooked up to the vacuum pump, and all I have is just this hose coming over to here. And again, I don't think you want the suction down here because you don't want it to suck, um, you know, water into the pump. You want that to be at the high part. So I got this backwards, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, and I'm just going to set this here on the O-ring, and I'm going to turn it on, keep this valve closed, and it'll just draw a vacuum in here. I wish I had a uh, marshmallow, but I don't. But here we go. Go ahead and turn it on. There, did you see how it just jumped? And when I first got this, this thing would go in little spurts. It was very, very inconsistent. Uh, it had some hang-ups in it. I fixed most of it by lubricating it. But notice, it's almost drawing 100% vacuum. Six, 760 is a pure vacuum um, because 760 millimeters of mercury is uh, pressure at sea level, or 14 pounds per square inch. So. You know, that's about as far as it's going to go, but that pump evacuated this entire cylinder out here uh, to almost a pure vacuum. Now, if I turn off the pump, you'll notice it keeps its vacuum, which is exactly what you want. And, of course, now this lid ain't coming off for any reason. Uh, now, as I open this, it's going to let air in, and you can see how I can control the level of vacuum. And it may stick. See how it has a little stick in it there? But I could stop it, say, right there. Now, here's another thing. Turn the pump on. This is why this is so important. If I turn the pump on, okay, and I can control the level vacuum by letting air in selectively, you know, and just, if I want, that's where I want the suction to be, or I can make it go more or less. That's the beauty of this thing, is I can now, by looking at the gauge, I can control it, and if I know where, say, the boiling point of something is, the amount of vacuum it needs, say, 20 millimeters of mercury, or 20 inches, it's listed here, excuse me, millimeters is out here. Those are both the scales that you really want, by the way. Um, so I can just know exactly where it needs to be set, uh, and that's uh, completely a beautiful thing there. And, of course, it's also acting as a water trap. Any chemicals or anything that gets sucked into this won't get sucked into the pump. So this, um, remember that little teeny vacuum trap that I made before? Uh, this basically does everything in one shot. And, you know, I could always change this gauge out because it's got the standard thread into this plexiglass here. I could even get a digital gauge. Uh, but this is beautiful, I and mean, this is going to do everything I want. And I can use it as a standalone vacuum chamber. Uh, it's, it's big enough. Um, so uh, I'm real, real happy with this. this. It was a great idea to get an ambulance, um, surplus ambulance equipment to do all this stuff that normally would have cost a fortune to assemble this. Um, this unit cost about $400 new, uh, which is kind of ridiculous, but that's medical for you. But if I bought all these pieces of equipment uh, uh, from a lab place, it'd even be more than that. So. Uh, I think it worked out really great. So I spent a little over 20 bucks for the whole thing, including shipping. So there you go, controllable vacuum. Um, and it's reproducible, and I've got a lot of control here. So I'm real, real happy with this. And there you can see, I wish the gauge didn't stick. And you see it's going to stick right there again. Just a little bit there, boom. Uh, I got most of the stick out of it. It was real bad when I first got it. But there you go.